everybody. Thanks for tuning in to us. I'm so glad that you have stopped and took your time. You've scrolled the internet or you've actually looked us up. However you got here, I'm just glad you're here. We've got one of our services, one of our words that we have given, one of our songs uh, we've put out here, and now we're together. The reason we do this is because we feel the Lord has put messages on our hearts, words on our hearts that we can help you. But the main thing is to glorify Him. So thank you for coming by and spending a little time with us. I, I promise, uh, don't just start and stop. Sometimes you got to catch up to me. you got to catch up to uh, everything. But if you'll put the time in, I think you'll find that God's got a word for you. Now, we'll be back in just a few minutes with some other things. And, and so just sit down, hold on, and let God bless you. We're going to be in different scriptures tonight. Ryan, it's the same scriptures I gave you the, this morning. And... Uh, this came to me this week. First place we're going to go is Luke chapter number 10. I didn't realize how many scriptures there are in the Bible about the Lamb's book of life and the book of life. It's in the Old and the New Testament. And uh, it's an important scripture, but I don't, rem uh, important subject, but I don't remember, to be honest, if I've ever preached on it. I know I've mentioned it in my preaching. The book of Revelation is mentioned many times just in that one book alone. Jesus himself talks about it. First scripture we're going to go to is Luke chapter number 10. And then we're going to go to Philippians chapter 4. So when you have it, stand with me, please. Brother Mike, could you give me that water right there? Wow, what a night so far. Amen. And I've realized this morning we had unsaved people here. I'm looking across. I don't know, but maybe somebody's watching. But this is about as serious of a message that you'll ever hear me preach. The most important book you'll ever be recorded in will be this book. Luke chapter number 10, verse number 20. Not Jesus talking, notwithstanding in this rejoice, not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And then over in the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter number four and verse number three. I entreat thee also, true yoke fellows, Help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement, also with others, fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Amen. We'll be going to different places later on. You may be seated. In my hand, it's just a ledger. In fact, the title of this book is called The Church Register and Records. This is actually our membership book. It is over 40 years old. All the names in this book come and gone. It has, it has active, inactive, sometimes the reason, moved, deceased, the date that it was entered, the date that it was taken out. This book has got a lot of flaws because it's been kept by people like me <laughs> uh, but it's just a record book in heaven somewhere in heaven I'm under the conclusion there is a book similar to this now what I mean by that and I'll go into more detail I looked up uh, you know the book it's, it's, it's literally says it's called the Lamb's Book of Life the Book of Life some places, like I just read, read it's just, just a record, okay, the book. But it, it, it all ties together with this definition of, of a book, a set of bound sheets for the writing or keeping of records. You can make a book out about anything. You can take a bunch of newspapers and make a book, Okay. It's when you got a, it's, it's a, a compi it's compiled. They're brought together, normally about certain subjects. For instance, if you're into baseball, you can get a, 
record book about wins and losses for a particular team, uh, batting averages, all kind of things, banking, and there's books, there's ledgers, you know, of, of what you have. It's a record. It's a record. And I want you to know something. When it comes to organization, there is, there's never been an entity in the universe, nor will there be an entity that is more organized than God. Amen. Nothing just happens. Amen. So Big Bang Theory, folks, uh-uh. It didn't catch God by surprise. God is the most organized of any being that's ever existed. So if he is the most ordered, then it is certain that he has records. My dad's back in the back. I don't know if he can hear me or not. I don't know everybody, but I'd almost laid my money down on this booty. My dad is one of the most organized people that you're ever going to come across. He's got records from 50 years ago. Uh-huh. That's right. As a church treasurer, he has been just, he's exemplary. I didn't get that gift. I don't even hardly know how to write down my name. I'm just being honest, but he is an organized man. And he, he I, I can call him when I need something and say, hey, can you go back and look? And he can go back and look in, you know, 2010 on a certain date and find out how many people were in church and who gave what. And if it was written down, it's written down. If it snowed, that's, if you've ever read his book, some of you have, he'll tell you who died this week and whether it snowed, whether it was hot, how many bales of hay he got off his field. It all makes it into the church book. <laughs> oh, my. But as organized as he is, he pales in comparison to the God the Father. Amen. God's, God has to. It's his nature. Isn't it? It's his nature to be organized, Brother Booty. It's his nature. God keeps records. And we're going to talk about this here record book that there is somewhere in heaven. Now, I, I, I know that it's, I, I, I tried to figure out how to break this down to get it to you. I, is there a physical, tangible book? Maybe. Is it some type of a spiritual book? Definitely. Is it some type of a metaphysical book? Probably. But when he lists, it's, it's over 14 different particular verses that talks about the book of life or the Lamb's book of life. It is in the Old and the New Testament. And it's the very last verse. Of the books in the Revelation. He is letting us know that he is keeping a record. At Christmas time, everybody gets all excited about the, the, the Fashisha song about Santa Claus. He's making a list and checking it twice. Going to find out who's naughty and nice. And I get so tickled at how people, how parents use that to almost black wash their, uh, brainwash their minds of their children to be good. If, we, if that foolishness is true, I want you to know, it's not true, but I want you to know something that this is. Amen. Somewhere in heaven, there is a book. Amen. That's got names in it. Amen. I got to looking at that book and looking at some of the scriptures in there. The most important thing that will ever happen to an individual that has ever breathed the breath of life is whether or not he gets his name 
into this book. Are you hearing that? That it's the most important part of anything that you will do. Amen. I, I told Collins with me here tonight, been spent all day with me, and we prayed, and after we prayed the sinner's prayer this morning, and I told Colin, I said, Colin, I think you're 11. He's the same age as CJ. I told that young man, and a lot of this is brand new to him. Most of the church he's ever got has been through Soul Squad. And as I know all this that he was, you know, just filling up on here this morning, how it must have been an overload to him. Uh, the last, I said, look at me. After we got done praying, I said, look in my eyes. I said, no matter where you go in life, no matter where your footsteps go, college, military, no matter what happens, you get married, whatever, don't ever forget this moment. Oh, don't ever forget this moment. You've heard me say this many times. I love that old hymn. Um, I can tell you the time and I can take you to the place. Where the Lord saved me by his wonderful grace. I can't tell you how and I can't tell you why. Amen. I, I, I don't know how, why, I don't know all that. But I remember when my burdens rolled away. I remember, I, I, you've heard me say this, when I was growing up, um, amen, different times, my knees hit the altar. I, I told Dakota here this morning, I looked at him, and I heard Brother Shane kind of say it, and I've told him this before. I understand him because I've been him. I know what it's like, amen, and once you have tasted God, nothing else will satisfy but I remember when God saved me. Amen. And I, and I believe this. Somewhere in heaven, I, I, the word is, I, I, it's not even the proper for this, but somehow just magically, supernaturally, my name, Thomas Dwayne Snyder, was written down, amen, that I became a Christian, a child of the living God, that I became born again, amen, my name was written down, amen, I, oh, I was, I, I was caught up in so many different, um, like many visions tonight, as, as people were singing, I was sitting over here, as Oscar was testifying, amen, my mind was just having visions, and, and I just, I could see almost in the, in the spirit world, and I could see angels just dancing when these kids were singing, on the roof, amen, this morning, amen, as these folks give their hearts to the Lord and came back to him, amen, as, as, as the angels rejoice. Jesus said, notwithstanding in this rejoice, not that spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Amen. It's one thing, and I'm going to tell you, when God uses me, amen, we see people healed, we see people saved, we see people delivered. I'm telling you, it, it does make me happy. Amen. But there is not a happiness that can compare, amen, as when we see somebody get saved. Amen. This great singing tonight, great playing music, all this, all this, these are wonderful. Amen. To see these kids sing. Amen. To see the drums and to see, uh, I was looking up here, Christian on that guitar, CJ on them drums. Amen. Watching Julie. Amen. Play. Ah, uh, Morgan up here for the first time. I, I, oh, that makes me want to dance. It makes me want to shout. It makes me want to skip. Amen. But the greatest of all of these is when we see people get saved and their name gets written in the book of life. Oh, hallelujah. Being a member of Back Creek Valley Church, that's all right. 
Amen. But you can be a member of Back Creek Valley Church and not have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You can be a member of the Rotary Club. You can be a member of the Moose. You can be a member of the Lodge and have your name in all their ledgers. Amen. But I'm here to tell you the one that's really important, the one that counts more than anything else, is not the Church of God or the Assembly of God handbook. It's God's handbook. Having your name written down in glory. We sang a couple of them old hymns here this morning. There's a new name. Written down in glory. And it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. And with the white robe angels. Sing that story. Another sinner has come home. Amen. Having my name written in the book. Brother Butts, having my name written in the book. Amen. You know, I get excited when I hear old time saints get up and say, you know, in 1958, I had my name written in the book. 1965, I had my name written in the book. All these years, I've had my name written in the book since 1984. Amen. I, that is that is beyond compare. It just blesses my socks off. Amen. When I hear them get up and say, it happened to me. But I really enjoy it. Amen. When someone says it, just now. Just now. I can get excited about somebody coming. Amen. To the Lord. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Exodus. I want to talk about a subject about this. Exodus chapter number 32. Exodus 32. Thirty-two. Moses talking here. Yet now if thou wilt forget their sins. If not blot me I pray thee out of thy book. Which thou has written. And the Lord said unto Moses. Whosoever sinneth against me. Him will I blot out of my book. Oh, my. My, my, my. You mean to say, Brother Tom, you, 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 can have, you can be in the book and be blotted out? This is before the New Testament. And Moses is saying, if you're going to blot them out, blot me out too. Well, that's Old Testament. Go over there to Revelation. Take us all the way. Just flip your Bible completely to the last part. Revelation chapter number 19, I believe it is. Let's see here. There it is. Revelation 19. Hopefully I wrote that down right. Mm. I wrote that down wrong. And where's it at? You got it? Oh, there, there it is. Is that it? It's there. Someone help me find it. It says. Clear over there that he would blot. Their name out. Of the book. Hey, oh he's got it up there. Well that's, that's Exodus. But we'll have your name. Blotted out. It can be taken away. That, that's serious business. Now, when I was studying this out, there's, there's some groups that believe that it can't be. You can't have your name taken out. If God was going to take out an entire generation of people that he had handpicked to lead out of the promised land. I mean, lead out of Egypt. Amen. 2015, thank you. Amen. That's what happens when you have it ready in the morning and preach it in the night. Where is it at? And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Yeah, that's another place. Yeah. That's a good one. I'm going to go to that one. Amen.
I told you there was a bunch of them. But there in no wise shall enter anything that defiles, neither whosoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they, that are, they that, which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And if any man, there I'm at it, the last page, verse number 19, last page of the book. Revelations. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book or the prophecy, God shall take away his part. God shall take away his part of the book of life out of the holy city. Listen, and I got to studying that this morning. If them people were good enough to write, and then they started, to do, they started in disobedience to add things onto it, God said he would take them out. Of the book. It's a dangerous place to be. I don't want my name to be blotted out. I don't want my name to be taken away. I want to make sure that my name. Is in the book of life. I want to make sure every day. That I'm good. That I'm good standing. Amen. I, I don't want to. Someone said, can you lose your salvation? Yes. And I know there's a whole group of folks that don't think you can. And they'll say, well, if you did, you wasn't saved to begin with. I, I do. I, I, can only, I can only attest for me. I've been in a backslidden condition before. Someone said, well, maybe you wasn't saved. No, I knew I was saved. I knew I was saved and I knew I was lost. I was backslidden. Yeah. Amen. I, I don't want uh, 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 t my name blotted out. Covered up because of sin. I want my name to be in big, bold letters. Amen. I don't want no questions about it. I want to make sure, church, that I'm going to make it to heaven. The most important thing is not how many people, amen, that we see healed or how many gifts we use or how much God uses. Paul said, if I myself become a castaway. Here's the man that wrote the majority of the New Testament. Testament, And he must have believed that you could be blotted out because he made statements like that. If I myself become a castaway. Over in Galatians, he said something like this. But though we nor an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you. If I come back preaching heresy to you. He must have believed that he was, he was capable of having his name erased from the book of life. Like I said, I'm not going to argue with people. But I know me. I've been in backslidden condition before. I'm not proud of it, but for the purpose of this message, I'll preach it. Amen. We must maintain. Go over there into the book of Revelations. Revelations chapter number 3. This is a great verse. Revelations chapter number 3. And verse number 5. Revelations 3 and 5. We quote this a lot. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Oh, that gives me some strength. Yes, yes, yes. I do believe you can be blotted out. But to him that overcometh, I will not blot out their name. Amen. An overcomer. We will overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to be singing, I will overcome. Amen. I'm going to make it somehow. Some way. I'm going to make it. Amen. I know 
I trip, I fall, and I stumble. I know I make mistakes uh, mistakes along the way. I told somebody uh, uh, Wednesday night, I think it might have been Jeff. I said, just keep on coming, brother. Just keep on coming. I know he, he feels like he trips up a lot. Uh, amen. And he's got to come back. You just keep on coming. Uh, to him that overcometh. Um, amen. To him that overcometh, I will not blot out. You keep on coming back. You slip up and you file. You slip up and you go down. You keep on coming back. That's what keeps your name in the book, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. It's not a one-time deal. Amen. You got to keep coming to the Father. Amen. You got to keep coming to Jesus. The, The apostle Paul also knew that every day he crucified the flesh. Amen. I want my name written in the book. Amen. I want to be an overcomer. Amen. I don't sit around and fret about being blotted out. I just keep on coming. Have you ever come into church? Anybody ever come into church and because of what you've done that week or something you've done wrong, that when you walk up the steps, when you came through the door, the old devil's just riding you. Trying to get you to turn around. You're not worthy to go in there. You're not worthy to sit on that pew. You're not worthy. Let me give you a hint here, devil. None of us are worthy. Amen. But through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have become worthy. Amen. No, I'm not worthy. Amen. Don't let the devil keep you out of God's house. Don't let the devil keep you away. Amen. He's trying to lie to you. Amen. And I've walked up them steps uh, just feeling uh, just just down and heavy uh, but I want you to know something brother Mike I heard just a little bit of your Sunday school class I heard the song uh, that's what this altar is for uh, this is all this altar is so that we maintain our record amen this altar is where we get everything right Amen. This altar is where we come. It's where we live. Amen. There was a part of the service tonight. Amen. And I I, I was caught in one of my visions. And I just saw me. I've never been much of a horse rider. I've rode a horse a few times in my life. Uh, I'd much rather ride a four-wheeler. I'm not real good at riding horses. Amen. I get by. I've only been at full speed on a horse a couple times, and both of those times was not on purpose. I remember one time I was on a horse up in Pennsylvania. His name was Bucko. And I, 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 Bucko got taken off, me and Brother Leaper, me and Brother Lewis. And Bucko got into a full gallop. I said, whoa, Bucko. And Lewis is hollering, you're just giving him, you're just letting him go. Amen. But in my vision, huh? Oh, I was so I was so messed up I couldn't pull back on that thing. Amen. But in my vision, I could see me just riding on a horse at full gallop. Amen. And I, I'm here to tell you, I felt like the Lord was saying to me tonight, ride this horse. Amen. You ride it, I'll keep you on the saddle. You ride it. If we gotta ride this altar, amen. We're gonna ride it, brother booty. Amen. Uh, Look around here. There ain't no perfect people. Amen. If you're a perfect person, please find someplace else to go. Amen. You're going to mess us up. Amen. There ain't no perfect people in this house. But there are people that's had their names in the book. Amen. We got our names in the book. And let me tell you something, Jeff. Let me tell you, Chelsea. Let me tell you, Drew. Let me tell you there, Mike. Amen. Uh, uh, the, the, The most important thing, Debbie, is to have our name in the book. Well, Brother Tom, I I messed up. Well, like I said, you can be blotted out. Amen. The children of Israel, God was very seriously thinking about blotting them out. You study that out. He was thinking about blotting them out. Moses stepped up to the plate. Here lately, there's been some folks I've been praying for. Oh, God. They're in dangerous place. Amen. That young man came up to the altar here. He was in a dangerous place. He needed this this morning. 
Amen. He told me later on, he said, man, he told me on the steps, he said, Brother Tom, it's been so long. He said, I felt so good. And I said, nothing else will feel that way. There'll never be a drink, a drug, a, a, a relationship, nothing that will make you feel that way. But if you continue to go out, you can be blotted out. But if you will overcome by the blood of the Lamb, if you'll keep on testifying, oh my, when I am weak, he is strong. Your name can be in the book of life. That song that I sang tonight, Loretta Lynn, I think, was the first one to ever sing it, at least naturally, uh, nationally and they tried the records companies and the radio stations tried to keep that song off the air because it was on country music stations and people, they didn't want all that. They didn't want everybody getting saved and, and contemplating there. They wanted people to be beer drinking. Well, I'm here to tell you that song's pretty plain. Amen. When you comes your time to die, and we're going to do a funeral here tomorrow. When it comes your time to die, the most important thing out of anything is that your name is in the book of life. It won't be what your bank account is. That's not going to be the most important ledger. It's not going to be how many awards you won. How many children you have. The most important thing when you breathe your last breath is that your name. Is in the Lamb's book of life. I'm looking around here tonight. I'm here to tell you the most important thing you'll ever do. Is get your name in the book. And continue. To make sure. That your name is in the book of life. People come up to me all the time. Phil Munson. And they say to me. How you doing? I don't know much, but I say I'm blessed and highly favored. And they'll look at me and say, well, Brother Tom, you really believe this? Peggy, I believe this with my whole heart. I believe the most important thing is that a person be saved and their name is written in the book of life. Let's everyone stand tonight. <laughs> He said, I will not blot out thy name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. The devil's going to fight you to your last breath. He's trying to take every human being that he can to a devil's hell. The Bible's real plain. Those... We read the scripture. Those whose name was not written in the book of life will bake in a lake. Uh-uh. You leave here. You pull out on this highway. And then suddenly you're in eternity. Well, you've just left the altar. Was well, your hands just up in the air? Were you praising the Lord? Mm. Like I said, only God knows everything. He knows whether your name's in the book. But it looks a whole lot better for you than if you left a dew drop in. If your blood alcohol level was... Mm. Your name... Must be in the book of life. Amen. Please search the book again. I thought, my, I thought my name was there. I went to church on Sunday. But I never knelt in prayer. Brother Troy this morning, he, he said, come on, let's get up front. There are people that come through our doors. That set. And I'm not the judge. Thank God I'm not the judge. But why aren't we getting in? Why aren't we having fruits of our salvation? 
Went to church on Sunday, but I never knelt in prayer. Please, please, God, I did everything I thought was right. No, you need to know that you know that you know that your name is in the book of life. Amen. We need to preach this from the mountaintop. We need to preach this in the valley. We need to preach this everywhere we go. You must be born again. Amen. Your name must be in the book of life. While every head is bowed. Jesus. Oh God. Lord, tonight, God, I check on my reservation. Lord, tonight, more than anything, I've got to make it. Tonight, God, put a burden on me. There's so many people in my life that's around me that we don't know if their name is in the book of life. Lord, in the name of Jesus. If there's anyone in this, in this house tonight. Anyone at all. And you just need to double check the ledger. Would you check the ledger right now, Lord? If you check it now, there won't be no doubt later. Is there any? Oh, hallelujah. How about if we all, everyone, young people in the back, I want you up front. Amen. How about if we all come? Amen. You can stand. You can kneel. Oh, but just talk to the Lord for a few moments. Just double check. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed this. And listen, the most important thing about this is if you do not know Jesus, Ask him into your heart. Pray that sinner's prayer. If you need to contact me, by all means, please contact me. Uh, if you've got questions, we believe God. Don't matter where you're at in the world, we will make contact back with you. And we appreciate your giving. Uh, this kind of thing does cost a little bit of money. And we're asking for help. You can help us. We've got all the information with our Tithely. You can send money through there. Uh, we appreciate your prayers and your response and for just liking us. Spread the news. Tell everybody that you know that Jesus saves and he's coming soon. Now remember, friends, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Go live it for the Lord.